<clears throat> I found out that my ex now and a part of me doesn't even want to upload the story time because I look crazy and if he sees this he may think oh see bitch this is why I did what I did because you don't take care of yourself but it is what it is I just I'm letting my hair rest but I Friday so my ex went on a trip to the Dominican Republic from November 3rd to November 8th um, the whole time that he's preparing for this trip, you know, I'm feeling something fishy. I'm feeling something in my gut. I'm feeling something that I cannot stop feeling. And I'm trying to convince myself <laughs> that I'm the one that's bugging and I'm crazy and this is unjustified. Because what if he's really not doing anything and my past trauma is just taking over mm, the logical side of my brain? something was off the whole trip you know like he gave himself what men are telling themselves um he gave himself away because he kept texting me like in between what he was doing he kept texting me and volunteering information like oh i'm about to go and do this and at first i was like mm, okay He's trying to ease my mind okay i appreciate that but i still have this stink ass attitude because something just did not feel right so on top of him, you know, volunteer information about, you know, what he's doing that he wasn't really even doing. Um, <laughs> he was love bombing me at a distance, texting me, you're my future wife. I'm going to marry you. I hope that if you do leave me for another nigga, I hope he's a bigger nigga because I'm going to end up fucking him up. And that mind you, he only hit bitches. He don't hit niggas. So... I like let it all go I, like, I wasn't feeding into it I was just like oh sounds nice sounds nice whatever I was not feeding into that shit I'll upload the screenshots because the way he was love bombing was like you've never been like this towards me before you're usually motherfucking hateful towards me don't ask me why I stay in relationships when they get a hate at me I got some mental health issues myself I need to work on but so Friday fast forward the eighth comes he's back he comes in the house he off rip looks guilty like I already sense something's off. So that night I ended up putting my extra phone to record a vo voice memo in the bathroom under his hamper so he couldn't see it or whatever. Cause he's tall as fuck. So I had to think go low cause he not gonna see it. So um, I put it there and I didn't catch nothing. He wasn't on his phone. He wasn't, well he was on his phone but I wasn't video recording so I couldn't really see what he was doing or know what he was doing. Um, whatever. So I, I almost gave up. I was like, you know what? You're bugging. Your mental health issues are really an issue. And you are the problem in this relationship. And you need to just trust this man because he didn't do anything, obviously. Like, he's excited to see you. He wants to be with you. I almost fell into that trap. <laughs> I almost did. So, so after almost falling into that trap, I laid low. That was like, that was, he came back on Monday. Tuesday, he goes to the clinic to get tested, but we had already agreed because I didn't trust him. I was like, okay, you know, it was a test. For me, it was a test. So I was like, when you come back, go, go get tested because it's like, you need to do nothing. Why you need to get tested, whether I trust you or not, if you didn't do nothing, it's, the math isn't math thing. So he goes to get tested. Supposedly, he got same day results. So he either had to tell him that he was having symptoms or he went to the emergency room. I don't know. He said everything came back negative. I should have asked to see the receipts. I should have, but I'm so fucking trusting. It's, it's sickening. So <clears throat> that was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You know, I'm in the office all these days, all these days. So he's home alone. It wasn't until Thursday, like something in me was just like, girl, something's not right. Something really just ain't right. Like his nether region kept being erect and mind you i'm looking like this i've got my wig on like i'm looking crazy so there's no reason for you to be at attention sir because i'm not doing anything that's that the least bit arousing so i was like hmm, strange like strange because i know you we've been together for a minute now like i know you that's strange so Thursday night, I was just like, I had it. I was like, my suspicions is coming over me. OD, I can't keep fucking living in my head thinking I'm crazy. So Friday morning before I left to the office, I hid my other phone again with the recording of the voice memo going. This time I had it on top of the fridge on a bag, like under a bag, like had it like whatever, hidden. But I was like, he's tall. So there's a chance that he gonna see this and he gonna go through this phone because the pastor was my date of birth. 
I didn't change it. Uh, he's gonna go through this phone. He's gonna see, you know, like I had a Tinder account that was like still up, but my profile was hidden, whatever, because I was looking for him in Dominican Republic on Tinder, which he confessed that he saw me uh, on Tinder. He confessed that. I'm not sure if he knows that he said that, but he said that out of his mouth. So Friday after I have to get out of work, I go straight to the fridge, like eight hours, eight long hours of thinking about this. I rush home. I go straight to the motherfucking fridge. Phone's gone. <laughs> I don't even got time to play these games with you. So I go upstairs and I'm like, can I have my phone, please? He give me my phone. He sh he looks scared as fuck. The nigga looks scared. So I already knew something was up. So I go, I'm looking in the voice memo. Voice memo is deleted. It's gone. And I'm like, if there was nothing on there, why did you go out your way to go on my phone and delete it? Like, you could have just stopped it. Been like, all right, she don't feel stupid because ain't shit on here. Ain't shit to know. But he deleted it. So I'm like, we're having a conversation. Obviously, he's like, oh, what's good with the Tinder? Like, what's good with this? So this is part three. Sorry. Hopefully the last part. So he wanted to sit down, you know, talk about, you know, what he had found in my phone, which is reasonable. Like, I sat down and, you know, I didn't want to because it was uncomfortable, whatever, because it's like, now I have to tell him how insecure I am, why I was on Tinder, what I was doing on there, you know. And there were, like, a lot of messages on there, guys, where interested in me and I was swiping because I had made the tender when we broke up in August the beginning of August we got back together at the end of September the middle of August to the end of September it was like three not even a full four weeks whatever so I had my tender because why the fuck not I'm single so whatever he had saw that there was like 4,000 guys on there that had swiped right on me. I matched with 40 guys. There was a lot of other guys in my, in, like there was a lot of stuff going on. So, you know, he went through my cash app. He was like, oh, why is niggas sending you money? Because I'm a fucking goat. What are you talking about? But yeah, so I, you know, like I'm giving him the real shit. Like, oh, this nigga sent me money for this reason, for that reason. He owed me this, so he gave me that. He tipped me, cause I braid here. So it's like, you know that. So you go to your, to a bitch to get your hair done when you know I do hair. So why, why is it a problem? It shouldn't be, right? So whatever, he was forgiving. And I'm just like asking him like, if I caught you doing the same thing, I would not, I look crazy. I would not be as forgiving, whatever, whatever. And he's just like, oh, and I was like, it just, to me, it's given, you know, you need, you have something that you you need to be forgiven for, or you're planning on retaliating. So in either way, I'm not with none of those shit. So I'm going to leave. So I'm packing my shit. And he's talking about, we still going to do this. We can still do this. We can still do this. We can make it work. We, my demand stayed. So now the voice recording is off my phone. He done switched the conversation to something else. I'm in the wrong now. Cause I fucked up. I should have changed my password. Yeah. But so I go into the bathroom. I'm getting high in the bathroom. Smoking my weed. And I'm praying. Like I'm smoking weed and praying. Yes, I'm a heathen. Smoking weed and praying. And I'm like, God, like if there's something on that voice recording that I need to see before I move forward with this man, show it to me. Mind you, it's deleted off my phone. It's not on my phone. It is nowhere on my phone. Saturday, fast forward, that was Friday. Saturday, you know, I go through his phone and I, I'm going through his videos and he recorded one of the, I only saw one interaction. He recorded it. Didn't know I saw it. I played it off. He's like, oh, we got a problem. Like, of course we got a problem. Nigga, you know what I just saw on your phone. I was giving him time to come to me. He ain't come to me. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to deal with it. So I'm like, I don't want to just come out and say something because he's going to lie. He's going to gaslight me. I'm going to be the wrong person. He's going to bring up everything that I've ever done and said and whatever. Just to just make this justifiable. So I sat on that. Sat on it. But so I get back to my house. My dog settled. I'm in my car outside smoking. Getting a dookie. And I'm listening to the recording. I don't know why I did that to myself. I'm listening to the recording and <laughs> uh, the more I listen, the more detailed it gets. He's talking about how altogether he had about eight bitches. The first night he had a threesome with two of them. He paid $60 per bitch. And um, the third bitch he fucked was the one that left, left a fucking imprint on him because she was this curly afro Dominican girl. Mind you, he came home talking about, why don't you get a curly afro? Sting, if you hate me, you could have just said that. <laughs> you ain't have to do this meeting for a year and a half. You could have left me alone because money making Mitch been on my ass for a minute. And I was curving him for you. Now I'm all washed up because I was depressed over you and I can't even get him now. But whatever. So 
he goes on to say, you know, how she was doing all this inappropriate stuff, nasty slut shit. And I'm like, yeah, he was right. He was right to go and get that down in DR because I wasn't about to be about that life. Like, I like respectable sex. You're not about to dis disrespect me inside and outside the bedroom. Hell no. So it went on with him saying all that. Fast forward, you know, I, I got drunk as fuck, obviously. What, what else was I going to do? I got drunk as fuck. I was in my feelings. I was sad. Like, I gave everything to this man. I did everything for this man. I was loyal as hell. I never cheated, not one time. I wish I would have. I, I really wish I would have cheated, but it's not even who I am. But I really wish I would have came out of character for him. But, um, so... I think like three I go out for drinks with one of my guy friends like old time friend used to be roommates and everything like we go out for drinks I'm telling him all this shit niggas ain't shit because all he wanted was some pussy at the end of the day he ain't getting none but that's all he wanted so whatever I ended up you know going to drink with him we ended up at his house and then I found out he thought he was getting some pussy and I was like I'm gonna just go pull up to my house and I don't even like I was so drunk like I don't even know like all I know is I see these bright ass head be high beams behind me and I'm just like that gotta be that nigga because I know his lights I gotta be that nigga I think we was on the phone. I think I was cussing him out. I don't know what. I was saying a lot of stuff. And then I said, you know, like, I called him, like, told him that he was bisexual because he liked when I put my finger in his booty. And um, I told him that he called me a hoe. But I'm like, but you pay for eight prostitutes. So <laughs> you never paid me. So you owe me some money, my friend. You owe me some motherfucking money all them times I felt you. But I'm getting better. Um, I finally ate something today. Bitch having ate since Saturday finally ate something today and i'm okay now because he lost not me i'm not the prettiest bitch ever i don't got the nicest body but you know what i'm loyal and i'm thorough and i'm a motherfucking ride or die and i'm gonna always be there for what's mine so that's his l so anyway um part four where uh, what i was saying was that he fucking um saw the video didn't say nothing whatever we watched um fatal affair he's over there talking about how grimy bitches is how she cheating on him her man when all he's doing is going to work and working hard and building the future for them and she wrong for that bitch ain't shit so me knowing what i know that i just seen in his phone that i'm trying to figure out how the fuck i'm about to go about this without getting beat up because he liked to beat me up when i tried to leave him or found him doing something so i had to really think about how i was about to handle this because i did not want to get beat up again at all so fucking after the movie's done you know i ended up you know just going upstairs like i'm gonna go lay down whatever he gets on his game he thinks everything's kosher so i ended up going on my extra phone that i had set up to record the voice memo that was deleted off my phone going on my extra phone to try to recover the voice memo the voice memo ended up being there i didn't even have to recover it it was right the fuck there nine hours and 35 minutes of it right there so i was like oh he probably deleted it before it finished uploading <laughs> Dumbass. before it finished uploading so now that it's done uploading it's back on my phone you thought you ate that you did not so anyway i'm listening to it six hours like it's nine hours i'm skipping through it i get to the sixth hour you know i'm listening per hour so i listen get to the sixth hour and i'm like you know i'm about to give up because this nigga really wasn't doing nothing or saying nothing he was being honest like i'm like i got some mental health issues i need to get a psychiatrist like this is crazy so hmm bitch kept listening because then i heard his voice like yo lee boy and i was like here it is the moment i've been waiting for the moment i've been fucking waiting for and that's when i found out you know like at first when i first heard the recording i stopped and even listened to the whole thing i heard him say yo my first night in dr i had two of them things meaning he had two females that he bought for 60 dollars each to have a threesome with him they went to this place in dominican republic called the casino him and his boy kwan and trev so von kwan and trev i don't give a fuck that that's their real names von kwan and trev and kwan got a seven month old pregnant baby mama at home that he's trying to buy a house with which is crazy to me because you just bought hella bitches and you probably got an std sir but i digress um yeah so i ended up just going downstairs looking at him in his face saying that's crazy that's motherfucking crazy and started packing my shit took my dog everything like how many bitches you fuck he's i ain't fuck no bitches of course you didn't why did i even ask you that i'm bugging stay clear of him he will ruin your life this man hospitalized me or had me arrested for shit that he was doing beating me up and then calling cop on me because he didn't want to go to jail yeah his mama did a good job with that didn't she 
I just came back from my massage. Bitch look crazy. It's cool. I really don't give a fuck at all. But, Stink, I got a question. How you hate me but you watching my page from um, fake ass Instagrams? Just, just curious. Asking for myself.